if you really want a healthy, successful plant-based pregnancy and labor and delivery with no medication, you know, as natural as possible, and you don't want to have to deal with that bouncing back, then I really recommend you really focus on mindset and breath and also just consistency and commitment to all things eating, moving, and resting your best. Just really quick, I wanted to say that I know that everybody and every body is different, and the last thing I want is for anybody to feel bad after this video. I'm simply sharing my story and what worked for me and the successes I experienced based on the choices I made um, throughout pregnancy during labor and postpartum. This is my story and I wanted to help you guys because I know that the struggle can be real. So I don't want anybody to feel bad about where they're at if they're not where they want to be. I just hope to inspire and encourage you guys to never give up and to keep trying. And my body has scars on it that it will always have from labor and delivery. You know, whether it be a mental, physical, or emotional scar, we all are left with some sort of baggage, some sort of wear and tear on our bodies from this experience, from this rite of passage. If you can learn to look at it as that, a rite of passage, I feel like it will give you so much more meaning and purpose and just fulfillment during this process. So let's get into it. Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back or if it's your first time to our channel then welcome. I'm now two and a half weeks postpartum, that means baby Olivia is two and a half weeks old. Tear, she's growing so super fast. <laughs> she's already gained almost two pounds so we're super excited. Breastfeeding has been going really well. I'll save that for a separate video. I'll definitely be coming at you guys with a what I eat in a day as a breastfeeding mom of two, yes, two kiddos, both at the teat. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a handful, but definitely a blessing, something I never thought I would be into, but I'm loving the experience so, so much. Aside from that, one of the biggest questions I've been getting, mainly in my DMs on Instagram, as well as in the YouTube comments is, what did I do to prepare for such a successful pregnancy, labor and delivery and postpartum? And how did I do it unmedicated and manage the pain? And then how did I manage to bounce back? So if I'm just being completely honest, I will say I don't really think there was much bouncing back to do. And I definitely attribute that to all of the healthy lifestyle habits I had built into, not just during my pregnancy, but completely prior to it. So if you're not pregnant yet, but you're wanting to become pregnant, I would highly recommend you start eating, moving, and resting your best now as opposed to waiting till when you're pregnant, when it becomes of utmost importance to nourish not just yourself but your baby as well. Thankful that I did that beforehand and I had been plant-based for several years before becoming pregnant with my number one, Max, who's now two and a half, and then becoming pregnant with Olivia. So I feel like things got better and better and they continue to get better. I feel better now in my 30s than I ever did in my 20s. And so I don't get too long-winded, I did make a list on my phone as far as things that were different this pregnancy and delivery and postpartum as opposed to uh, my pregnancy with Max, which was also unmedicated, extremely uneventful in a good way in that I didn't have a lot of bumps in the road with that pregnancy or delivery or postpartum either, but things were even unimaginably better this time around with Olivia, and I still myself am shocked and surprised by it, but I will say, giving myself a pat on the back because I do attribute it to lifestyle, like I said. So things that were different. With Max, I used hypnobirthing, so I didn't use that and somehow still came out ahead. We went with a doctor instead of a midwife and he ended up being much more natural-minded and able to allow us to do exactly what we wanted, even more so than the midwives. So again, better labor and delivery, more natural with a doctor. Got to the hospital earlier. That was huge for me. Such a game changer. Did a water birth. So with Max, I labored on my back in a hospital bed. This time I was not on my back, which we all see it in the movies and we're told that it's ideal, but it's ideal for the doctor. Physiologically, for birthing a child, it is the opposite of ideal. So I birthed on hands and knees, all fours, in a bathtub, and it was phenomenal. The next thing is I was not hooked up to an IV. So last time I was because I tested GBS positive and needed to have um, an antibiotic drip uh, for baby's safety during labor and delivery, which I was totally crushed by. Even though I did everything 
without pain management, no interventions. That was one thing that I did and did not do this time. So no IV, no antibiotics. Another thing was my labor was cut in half. So instead of a 12 hour labor, which still wasn't that bad with Max, this time it was only six hours. So I went into labor just after midnight and we finally decided to go to the hospital and got there by about 4, 4.30 and then Olivia was born at 6, 16 a.m. So just a couple hours in the hospital itself. Other things, these are postpartum things that um, basically were the game changers of all for me. So no diastasis recti, so that is where you have ab separation, so if you lay back on your uh, back and you put your fingers between your abs you can feel that separation so with max mine was almost four fingers and this time it's like one and a half which is about normal so that was huge for me i thought i was going to have diastasis again i signed up for a program to help fix it which i'm still going to do anyways just to strengthen my core and knit things back together um, it's actually by nancy anderson i can link it below for you guys but this time around, I'm surprised. I don't know why they're not stretched, um, but that was a nice surprise. No tearing. This was even bigger because with Max, I had a urethral tear. It wasn't severe. That was definitely the most painful part of labor by far. So I don't blame anyone who is fearful or anxious or not wanting to tear. I didn't this time, and it definitely made the pushing process just so much better. And then finally, no pelvic floor dysfunction. So that was another thing I did have a little bit of minor with Max. I would come home from jogs with wet pee pants after, you know, passing by old high school friends on the path. <laughs> and it was actually kind of funny, but in hindsight, like I thought it was normal. And even though it's common, it's not normal. And there are definitely ways that you can rehab, which everyone should be educated on. There are also definitely ways to prevent it altogether. So now we'll kind of dive into those questions. How did I prep? How did I do it unmedicated? And how did I bounce back? It only boiled down to two really separate things as far as what I did to prepare um, that made me feel so successful and empowered and in control to have such a great natural water birth. And number one is commitment and consistency. So our channel is Eat, Move, Rest. We talk all about the three things we all do every day that we could all be doing better. And that's honestly what I did. So I had these healthy lifestyle habits already built in and I'll take you guys through what exactly I ate every day during pregnancy and touch on what I'm eating postpartum to kind of replenish. So if you guys have been on this channel for a while, then you know I've talked a lot about my aversions to green leafies. I kind of just listened to my intuition and said, okay, how can I get those same nutrients in in different ways? So I had already been very religious with my green smoothies. I continued keeping up with those as well as doing a lot of green juices. So greens are super alkalizing, mineralizing, super high in antioxidants. So I knew that I still wanted those greens and those veggies in my diet. I just snuck them in in sweet fruity smoothies like I'm used to and that was definitely enough to help me have peace of mind and be less anxious about not eating those healthy foods. Something else I should mention as far as the smoothies go is your super. So you guys have probably heard me mention this brand before. The reason I love their superfood blends is because they are all 100% USDA organic. They don't contain any chemicals or fillers or unnecessary ingredients. I just like things to be like pure and straight and simple and to the point. So all of their superfood blends are just that. I would always add in a lot of their superfood blends into my smoothies. Still to this day, my favorite one is the Forever Beautiful blend. I also love the Chocolate Lover. And another favorite is their Greens one. They've got a collagen one, which can be fantastic for helping with elasticity of your skin. So if you're thinking, I don't want stretch marks, I don't want to tear, the plant collagen can definitely be very, very helpful as well. So I would definitely look into checking their products out because you guys can also get a discount with my code EATMOVEREST. It'll all be linked below in the description. As far as lunchtime, both pregnancies, I really, really like extra craved fruit, which is what I'm typically eating anyways during the day. So I continue to do a lot of that as well as um, my baked goods that are super protein and iron rich and healthy fats as well. So my strawberry banana muffins, which I'm now enjoying postpartum because they're fantastic for lactation. 
So the recipe is in our ebook, which is linked below. I did have a lot of morning sickness and I've had questions as far as how did you combat morning sickness? And the unfortunate truth is that I just had to power through it. I never found anything that worked. So how did I manage that with the aversions and everything? I just stuck to what was healthy and whole that still appealed to me. It seemed like as soon as I would find something that felt right, I wouldn't want it anymore. So I just kept finding the next best thing that was still a whole food that I could still get down. So honestly, it was just kind of like a survival of the fittest type of thing. Staying on this antioxidant rich diet, um, I didn't suffer with postpartum blues at all with Max and so far I just feel super energized and I don't feel bummed at all this postpartum either. So again, just keeping your body and your mind fueled with all of these healthy nutrient dense plant foods definitely plays a part. So as far as moving goes and exercise and fitness goes, this is where I really listen to my body a lot better than I did with Max. And I attribute that to why I didn't tear and also why I didn't have any pelvic floor dysfunction and why I didn't have diastasis recti, um, all of the above. With Max, I was still pushing myself quite a bit. I think that I kept doing what I wanted to be doing as opposed to what my body really needed for me to be doing. This time around, I skipped a lot of the moves that I knew weren't good for my core. Um, so again, the planks and laying on your back and doing sit-ups and crunches. It's just something that you should totally avoid when you're pregnant, especially as you get bigger into second and third trimester. So I did Bar Blend, which is a beach body on demand program, which I highly recommend because it's very great for toning and sculpting. Um, while also being low impact, but it also incorporates enough cardio that you get to breathing hard. So I would definitely recommend those. I'll link it below. I did a little bit of light jogging, but then towards second trimester, I just wasn't even interested in running. And instead I decided to try some new workouts. I really love HIIT style workouts. Again, I, anything that needed to be modified, I would either just like skip that and take a breather during that move, or I would just, you know, do another move that I came up with myself. And then third trimester was when I really, really hit my stride. Uh, Dusty actually found this YouTube channel. He searched for a core workout on YouTube and found Heather Robertson. So I absolutely, worship her <laughs> and I'm not kidding her workouts are, are amazing because she doesn't talk during them which I really enjoy they're perfect length they're all about like 30 to 40 minutes long pretty much all low impact and a lot of them use dumbbells which I really enjoy so I focused a lot more on strength this pregnancy the reason why I didn't feel like I had to do any bouncing back I attribute to like doing her types of exercises. They just felt so right and so good for my body because I was still working hard without damaging myself. So just listening and pulling back, reeling back really helped. And the other thing I did was um, we got a spin bike, which I can link below. First and foremost, it's beautiful. It's not super expensive like um, the Peloton and it gets the job done. It's low impact and it's great for cardio, especially if you are feeling kind of heavy towards the end and sluggish. Like it's nice to just get on and pedal at a good pace. So fitness was huge. We also in third trimester, especially, this was throughout, but especially third trimester, got very religious with our long family walks. Last but not least, I stayed super committed to getting good rest. I would obviously get up to go to the bathroom. There was a lot of pressure going on down there, but I was able to sleep and get a solid eight hours pretty much every night throughout my entire pregnancy. And I attribute that to just not having as much of the anxiety and stress um, around being pregnant and what would come next. I kind of knew what to expect. Even when things didn't feel great, I was like, it's just part of pregnancy. I think the main thing that helps me sleep like a rock is my body pillow. When you're pregnant, it helps more so because your belly is so big and it helps with your hip alignment which ultimately helps with your spine alignment and it just helped me to really feel like just a lot more comforted and secure when I was sleeping too so definitely look into getting a body pillow all right so that's all things eat move rest that was all number one just boiling it down to commitment and consistency number two mindset and breath so I have to attribute cutting my anxiety and stress in half all down to my mindset and my breath. You know, before food, we need water. 
but before water, we need breath. So last pregnancy, I did a hypnobirthing home study course. Everything literally went out the window during labor and delivery, and I never really loved doing the hypnobirthing. It felt kind of forced, I guess I would say, and I just did it because it felt like that's what I was supposed to be doing. And this time around, I just did what intuitively felt best to me. And to me, it all felt like it boiled down to my mind and visualization and getting really good at visualizing what I wanted to happen, what I wanted the outcome to be. I did a lot of meditation. If you guys uh, go back on our channel, very recently we did a uh, My Morning Routine video and I got very, very consistent and committed to my morning routine and it was all based around mindset. It was all based around visualization. Basically, my morning starts out going into my office room where I would sit down and do a 10 minute meditation. So I have a handful of apps that help me. If I could recommend one meditation app, it would be Headspace. So I would start with meditation and then after that I would read some scripture and I have a couple apps for that as well. Number one is the YouVersion Bible app, um, and then the other one is Jesus Calling. So that's more of like a devotional, and I would do those. And then number three, the third part is I would journal. So I bought the five minute journal recommended to me by a friend, and that was super, super helpful because it just has you go through um, things that you're grateful for, uh, what you want to happen to the, uh, for the day, um, you write down a mantra for your day to repeat to yourself and then at the end of the day you come back and you write three good things that happened that day. So super simple and straightforward um, but it really helped me to get in the right mindset and that mantra daily really helped me to feel more calm, cool, and collected and more confident and in control. Having all of those tools in my back pocket, I think just building upon that habit every single day really, really helped me. And during my meditations and my morning prayers and evening prayers, I really, really started to heavily focus on visualizing what I wanted the outcome to be. So a lot of times they tell athletes to do this or public speakers to do this, is to kind of put themselves in that position of winning the gold medal or giving an amazing speech. And so I kept imagining myself um, just having this very, very in control calm, cool, and collected, labor and delivery, and it's truly what helped, I think. And then on top of that, I also recommend finding a happy place that you can go to in your mind during contractions. This is the other thing I really, really practice on when it comes to mindset. So the contractions kind of build and build and get more and more difficult to manage as labor progresses until you get to that urge to push stage at which point it's just, you know, it becomes very primal. But during the contractions, you really need to take yourself to a happy place. If you've seen Happy Gilmore, like there truly needs to be a happy place in your head you can go to. <laughs> so for me, I'm always on this big grassy hilltop, like a pasture or a meadow, and there's a big old gnarly tree that's just like massive and it's been there hundreds of years. And I'm sitting like nestled into this enormous lion. So if you guys have seen The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the lion, Aslan, actually represents Jesus. And that used to be one of my favorite childhood movies. And I think that's where that came from, but like my happy place is just with this lion on this hilltop during sunset or sunrise. Sometimes there's other animals there too in my mind. I've always been a very, very big uh, nature nerd, so that's my place. It's pretty simple and it's just that feeling of like being encapsulated by this lion's fluffy mane that really brought me peace and I went there during my contractions and it worked a lot better than the hypnosis. So that's that for mindset and visualization and then on the side of breath I really focused on a couple of different breathing patterns that helped me a lot. Number one would be um, just inhaling for four seconds, exhaling for seven seconds. And this is what I ended up using during my contractions that helped me the most. Another one that some people find helpful is box breathing. So you would inhale for four seconds, hold it at the top for four, exhale for four seconds, hold it at the bottom for four, and visualizing that box in your head. And it kind of varies based on the person, which one you prefer, what works better for you, but I kind of felt like it was much more calming for me to do the inhale for four seconds and then exhale for seven seconds because it kind of over time slows your heart rate 
and kind of puts you in this more calm and relaxed mode. So that helped me a ton. And when it comes to finally having that urge to push, focusing still on that healthy breathing pattern can help you not to push too hard too fast because that's when tearing happens. So I also knew I wasn't going to use any drugs. I did it one time without pain management and I knew for that reason that I could do it again. So I will say I was much more calm during pregnancy this time because I knew what to expect, but I was much more anxious about the labor and delivery itself because I know just how painful it ended up being. There was a certain amount of naivete the first time around. I didn't really know what I was in for. This time, I really tapped into reminding myself that women were designed to do this. We've been doing this since day one, and so many women have done it before me. So just like, kind of like finding that and embracing that, that feminine energy and power, not just from within and having experienced it myself, but like our ancestors for generations upon generations, for hundreds of thousands of years, really tapping into that power um, and that life force and that energy and that fuel helped to encourage me and to remind myself that, yeah, you've got this, you can do this. So I think that's something to definitely keep in mind when you're getting your mindset prepared for possibly going into a natural unmedicated childbirth. Um, this time around, I was wanting to consider a water birth because I didn't get in the tub with Max and there were bathtubs at our hospital. So this time around, um, when, it, when my contractions started to get a little bit uncomfortable, my doula and one of the nurses said, do you want to try getting in the tub? And I was like, I've got nothing to lose. If I want things to be different this time and I've seen a lot of successful water births, I've got nothing to lose, I might as well try it. So I just kind of nodded my head. The whole time I, I really preferred to be like eyes closed and kind of turned inward so I could focus on my breath and all of that during labor and delivery. So that was the one time where I kind of had to like be more alert and I got in the tub and I felt like as soon as I got in and I was kind of like on my knees and like my arms rested against the edge of the tub, I really felt such a, a release. Like I felt like it was finally time to like move things along and the, one of the nurses asked, are you feeling the urge to push? And I wasn't sure until she said that, and then my mind went there. I was like, yep, this is gonna happen. The doctor finally came in. He was only in there for about five minutes, literally, um, before baby was born. Otherwise, it was just me, my doula, Dusty, and a nurse. So it was very calm and peaceful. It was probably about that third push that was the only actual, actual push and I just knew it. My mind went there and I knew, I was like, this is it. I'm not gonna stop pushing until this baby's out. And that's exactly what happened. I honestly gave it a roar slash blood curdling cry that lasted for probably like a minute, a minute and a half and baby was out. And Dusty goes, did you hear Dr. McNeely after you did that? He goes, that was insane. <laughs> so I don't know what that means, but it felt intense, it felt insane. Olivia was born and it was amazing. So as far as like the, log the logistics of things at the hospital, like what kind of environment we created and even just getting there earlier, like I said, helped tremendously. So I'll touch on that for just a second. With Max, we got there so far progressed that I was in such, so much pain. It was difficult just getting there. So I felt like I wanted to be on top of things and in control. I just knew like in my heart and in my mind, if I'm there ahead of things, then I think I'll feel more calm and collected. And that's exactly what happened. We darked out the room. My doula put up some candles. I had brought some essential oils this time that I actually used. I also had some spa music. So last time I was like past the point of carrying and kind of just like stressed and like, let's just get this baby out. But this time I just felt like all of that played a huge role in just helping things to flow more smoothly. Last but not least, how did I recover? How did I bounce back? The answer isn't exactly sexy. I don't think that I ever really bounced back. I don't feel like I had to, either mentally, physically, or emotionally, and I attribute that all to everything I did leading up. If you really want to, as you call it, bounce back quickly, the best answer I can give you is to stay committed throughout pregnancy. You know, it's only been two and a half weeks and I'm the same exact size. 
I was beforehand and I know everybody and every body is different so this isn't to you know make anybody feel bad it's just me sharing my story and my experience in hopes that it can help you so that you won't have to feel like oh my gosh I've got to hit the ground running if I want to get back into that same pair of jean shorts because that's just not a healthy place to be postpartum you really want to focus on those sacred first 40 days in fact there is a book I highly recommend called The First 40 Days that can help you to really learn how to nourish and replenish your body to give yourself exactly what you and baby need. Another reason a lot of people feel like they've gained a lot of weight or they've got a belly pooch afterwards is being hooked up to an IV. At least give yourself the peace of mind that if you are hooked up to an IV, just know your body is gonna have a lot of excess that needs to get flushed out. So that's something to keep in mind. I will say, I was hooked up to an IV and I felt a lot more puffy and just foggy and groggy afterwards with Max and this time not having those fluids in felt so much better, like light years better. So if you can go that route, highly recommend it. The more you can do things naturally and avoid interventions, the better off you're setting yourself up to be postpartum, both um, physically and mentally and emotionally. So just something to keep in mind as well is just really focus on how can I do things with as little interventions as possible so when it comes to that you know amazing golden hour you're able to just be and really just connect and regroup and get to know your baby and and give yourself a pat on the back as soon as Olivia was born I reveled in that amazing golden hour where it was just me and Dusty and baby and she started breastfeeding and we got that skin to skin contact. All of this is super, super important when it comes to your mental health and the health of your baby as well. So that's something that can really, really help with avoiding postpartum blues, baby blues or postpartum depression because when you're getting that immediate skin to skin contact, it's releasing oxytocin, which is the love drug or the love hormone. It really, really stimulates your body to just feel connection and to feel safety and warmth and love. And honestly, you guys, like there's so many cliches about becoming a parent, but your heart really does just explode with love. It doesn't divide, it just grows and grows and it's super amazing. Last but not least, snacks that I had in the hospital during labor and delivery and what I've been nourishing myself with postpartum. A couple of things that I swear by that really helped me after giving birth was my frozen grapes. So being it's summertime, that just felt like so much better than ice chips to have on hand. So that was very, very helpful because I was pretty hot. And then coconut water was the other thing. I just felt like those were very hydrating and cooling and really helped me through. And since getting home, Thankfully, we didn't do much meal prep this time around, but Dusty's like, don't worry about it, babe. I'm going to take care of you, and I'm beyond grateful for him for that, among many other reasons, um, being such a supportive partner that is willing to go above and beyond to take care of me. Um, we've been eating amazing food, like the best food of all time, and all of my nausea and food aversions completely went away as soon as Liv was born. We've been enjoying tons of hearty, very hearty soups and stews. So I'm back on the red lentil kick. Um, again, focusing really on iron rich foods and also lots of healthy fats. So avocados are back on the table. Um, adding like coconut milk or coconut cream to our soups and stews and curries. Um, doing lots of sweet potatoes again. Tons of healthy smoothies, adding in those chia and flax for more healthy fats. Lots of um, spices and seasonings. We always love ethnic foods, so doing a lot of like Thai inspired curries and Indian curries and stews. Uh, we have a lot of great ones in our ebook that's linked below. We've been pretty much going through those and then Dusty's been tweaking a few here and there, so we've got one that we just shared in last week's video you can check out. Just keeping it fresh, keeping it healthy and whole, lots of healthy carbs during the day. My milk supply has been overabundant like it was with Max, so I know that I'm doing something right. I've been doing my um, lactation muffins and lactation oats. Um, those are definitely amazing recipes you guys should check out. I can do a whole separate video, like I said, on being a breastfeeding mom of not one, but two kids. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. All right, you guys, I've got a baby girl who is super hungry. And if you guys liked this video, if you got something out of it, 
please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell so you'll get notified whenever we put out new content on our channel. Leave me some love in the comments below and also let me know what worked out for you, what kind of uh, pregnancy, labor and delivery, and postpartum experience you had, and if you have any other tips for other people. I know there are a lot of you out there who have been wanting this video, so the more of you who can comment and start a conversation, the better, because I don't have all the answers, and I definitely learn a ton from you guys, and I know you take from each other as well. Until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Bye, guys. There are three things we all do every day, and we could all be doing them better. Eat move and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.